When you're looking to buy solar panels, some are cheap and some are expensive. It's hard to tell the difference just by looks. Do the expensive ones just work a little better or what? My name is Tanya, I'm business manager at A1 Solar Store and today I'll explain the difference between expensive and cheap solar panels. I'm going to start by talking about general factors that make a panel expensive or cheap. We'll then compare three models and wrap up by summing up whether it is worth getting expensive solar panels. I'll be talking about the most common solar panels for home, monocrystalline panels, that range in their output from, say, 350 to 500 and above. Smaller portable and flexible solar panels are kind of a different market and they serve a different purpose. The first thing that dictates the price of a solar panel is the country of origin. The majority, about 70% of all solar panels are made in China. The reason for this is easy access to raw materials and cheap labor. On average, solar panels that are made in the United States are 20% more expensive and European-made panels are 35% more expensive. That's why many brands have headwaters in Europe or North America, but have factories in China. Is it a bad thing when a solar panel comes from Asia? Some of us may be a little prejudiced when they see the label made in China, but by default, there is nothing wrong with it. In fact, Chinese engineers have the most experience when it comes to making solar panels, and it is they who come up with the newest designs and set records in efficiency. The problem with Chinese panels is that they sometimes are hard to get in the United States. There have been situations when US Customs blocked the import of Chinese solar panels into America, and the country had to rely on its own solar machines. Manufacturers. The second thing that heavily impacts the price of a solar panel is the brand name. If a panel comes from a well-known brand that has a huge history behind it, then you can expect it to be more expensive than average. The most obvious examples are Panasonic and LG. Manufacturers use all sorts of tactics when trying to build a public image. One of them, for instance, is pointing at the tiering system for solar brands to try to convince the customers that their panels are that much better than the others when in reality it has nothing to do with the quality of panels. Recently we made a video on tier 1 solar panels where we explain what this concept really stands for. Here is how I look at it. The added value of a brand name is overrated, but at the same time I wouldn't get solar panels from a manufacturer that no one has ever heard about and which you cannot even look up. When choosing a panel, check the brand's reputation and reviews. If they look fine, then it won't matter if that brand is as well known as Panasonic. The third thing is finally the design of a solar panel. Here is where it gets more complicated and interesting. What kind of material a solar panel is made of? How well does it perform? What technologies are used and what kind of certification is received? All these matters and impacts the final cost. First, let's talk about the quality of our solar panel. We can sort of measure it through the warranty the brand is confident to offer for their panels and reviews. Cheap Chinese panels, though not all of them, commonly have a 12-year product warranty. Expensive panels from brands like Panasonic and REC usually have a 25-year warranty, and some brands started offering 30. The highest that it ever gets is 40 years with Maxion solar panels, that are known to be especially expensive. When it comes to reviews, it's pretty simple. With cheaper panels, you tend to see more negative reviews which gradually disappear when you move to more expensive brands. What about performance? Well, money equals power. In general, a solar panel that provides 500 watts is going to be more expensive than a 300 watt solar panel. But what if we have two panels with the same rated power output, but with a big difference in price? Well, it's likely that a more expensive panel has a higher efficiency, which means it is smaller while providing the same power output. This becomes important when you have little space and you must squeeze as much energy from it 
as possible. Then there are quite a few design decisions that impact the price of a solar panel. Some panels have higher corrosion resistance. It is common for manufacturers to split the panel in two, so that one half doesn't influence the other when it gets shaded. It is called half-cut cell design. Very common. It makes a panel more costly, but improves the performance greatly. Panasonic and a few other brands use heterojunction cells that make panels resist heat better. The list goes on and on. Some panels, and this is important, have built-in microinverters. These panels are called AC modules. A microinverter by itself costs about 100 bucks, so a panel is going to be significantly more expensive than a standard one. But when you have a system made of AC modules, you don't need a separate inverter. Let's compare three panels for three different prices. All of them are similar in output, which is the first thing you are looking at, but tiny details might make a big difference in price. Let's start with Trina solar panel. It is rated for 415 watts and the price for it is a little over 200 bucks. Obviously, this might change depending when you are watching this video. It's actually a bifacial panel and it comes with 25-year warranties both for product and performance. Well, why so cheap then? It is a Chinese panel. Trina is one of the largest brands in China and they have the means to offer a good warranty for their panels. Next, we have a model from Mission Solar. It has the same power output, but it is monofacial. The warranty is issued for 12 years and it can be extended to 25 years. The efficiency is only 19%. Despite that, it costs about $270 on their market. The reason for this is that it is an American panel and it is made in San Antonio, Texas. Finally, let's have a quick look at the Panasonic Everwalt solar panel. It costs about $480, by far the highest price among the three. It's rated for 410 watts and the efficiency reaches 22.2%. This is actually very high. The warranties are for 25 years, both for product and performance. The panel ages slower, shows great performance when it is hot, lots of good things about it, except the price. But it is Panasonic, so it makes sense. Okay, let's sum it up. The price of a solar panel primarily depends on three factors. Country of origin, brand name, the properties of a solar panel itself, which include power output, efficiency, quality, warranties, and design features. Now, does it ever make sense to buy expensive solar panels? I would say if you are trying to cut costs as much as possible, you can do it by picking cheaper panels. At the same time, if you want the panels to serve you for decades, if your state is cloudy and if your roof space is limited and you need lots of power, it makes sense to get panels that cost extra. One thing you have to remember is that, yes, solar panels are a big part of the hardware costs of a solar system, at least 60-70% to 70 of it when you don't have the batteries. But at the same time, hardware is only 30-40% to 40 of what you might pay for the system when you include soft costs, which are things like installation, labor, permits, inspections, shipping, and so on. So when you look at it, savings from picking cheap panels can be significant, but they aren't that big in the scope of the whole solar system. That's basically it from me on the subject of cheap versus expensive panels. Let me know what you think in the comments. Check out social networks, magazines, and of course, A1 Solar Story itself. I'm Tanya, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.